not going unnoticed. And I'm sitting down chatting to three Oscar winners. So how was that to have that creative energy and talent all together when you were working on this project? Matt, well, we'll be clear you? to start with um, what we did at Artist Equity was finance the movie. Uh, Killian produced it with Alan and put it together and they took what we had to offer and support and went and made the movie. And the beauty and excellence and magnificence of the movie is wholly a result of their work. Um, we're we're really proud to be and sitting here with you because they did such a great job. We're trying to take as much credit as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Just That's what you, we're studio them. heads now. That's what we, studios that's do. What you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly, you're part of that now. So Matt, I know Killian came to you when you were filming Oppenheimer, wasn't he? And he pitched this idea to you, is that correct? Well, I was explaining what, we were just getting artist equity off the ground and I was telling Killian what Ben and I were trying to build. And he and, and I asked him if he had anything and he says, I happen to have this really wonderful uh, uh, script that Enda Walsh has done, which is an adaptation of a Claire Keegan novella. And I'm like, oh my God, this is exactly what we're looking for. So I read the script and and called Ben immediately, sent it to Ben. And I mean, it, it's it's just, it was a very embarrassingly easy decision for us to finance this this film. Killian had put together a package of, you know, Tim Melens, who was a wonderful director from P that he knew from Peaky Blinders. And you know, Alan Maloney was producing and I'd already produced something with Alan. So we we all it was a very collegial kind of we all knew each other and and we know the quality of work that these people do. And so it was it was just a very for us at Artist Equity. It's about facilitating a situation like that and going, OK, how do we support? You know, how do we empower you guys and get out of the way? Because we're we're, we're entrusting you to we're basically just underwriting you and 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 and, and we're betting on you and and. And these guys went off and made just a magnificent movie and 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 brought it back to us. It it was it's not always going to be this easy and frictionless because that was just really speaks to the level of skill that this team that Killian put in place. Um, you know, it, it, it just speaks to kind of their ability and their and their you know their 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 talent really. And Killian, I know this is the second time I'm lucky enough to speak to you about your beautiful film. Was it just, you must have been thrilled with how this all came together with Matt and Ben and Artist Equity for your first movie under your production company. What was, what was that conversation like when you spoke to Matt originally about it? Well, I mean... It, 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 it for us as well it w won't always be the case that you get the you know the people that are financing your movies are people that you've admired for many many years and have made incredible films under you know writers and directors and actors that you hugely admire I mean that's really rare and and because you have that level of trust uh it's 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 very unusual but that's the philosophy of the company and that's what makes the company so unusual and successful is that uh, it is artists talking to artists. So for us, that was just a, a massive privilege and gift. Um, and then we, we we made the movie and, you know, we sent it to those guys and we had really, really helpful notes backwards and forwards. But it was very gentle and uh, um, very trusting kind of uh, working environment. So that's I mean, to, for that one to be for us, for our production company, for that to be the first one out was just it couldn't have been better really you know they were the best partners and then and then we're, we're we're so happy with with the result of the film because you know it was th those guys let, let us make the film that we'd wanted to make from the beginning um and i think you can see that in the film do you know and killian why was this project this this book this adaptation why was this the fir the first movie you wanted to make for your production company it's such a dark terrible true story about Magdalene Laundries. Um, what was it about this that stood out for you? Um, well, it's a, it's a very, very simple story on paper, but actually it's incredibly complex. And, and, and I think it is 
very peculiar to Ireland in one way, yet it's resonating with people who, where, whatever, wherever they're from. You know, we we sh- show this f- film in Berlin. It opened the Berlin Film Festival, and there was a massive reaction to it. And you know, we screened it with the guys out, out in Los Angeles, and there was an amazing reaction to it. And and now it's open in Ireland and England, and it's opening in the US. So there seems to be this great universality to it. And I know everyone says that about every movie that it has this universality, but it actually does with this story. And I think it does speak to a lot of what's happening in the world today, but in a very gentle, gently provocative way. And, I, you know, I like films that have a point of view. I really like films that have a powerfully human dimension to them. And this this one seems to have that because that's what the book had. And were you familiar with this terrible time in Irish history? Were you familiar with the book before Matt brought this to you? Me? He brought it to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, it was Ben. Oh, sorry. Uh, I, I mean, I was only, you know, I grew up in Boston uh, with Matt and the very, in Boston, you'll have a lot of people who will look you right in the face and say, I'm Irish. Although they've never been to Ireland and they sound like you and me at United, were Matt and I, and some of them maybe couldn't find Ireland on a map. It's a, a kind of a cultural, uh, historical affinity that means something different than being Irish nationally. It means uh, my parents were immigrants and there was a lot of, you know, persecution and, and prejudice and et cetera. It, it means something very particular to, to Massachusetts, to New England. Um, but so we got a kind of filtered uh, version of what was going on in Ireland that I think would probably not obviously being Irish, I, I can't say, but my suspicion is that it would be very different from what you might have heard or know about having experience of living there, for example, during the Troubles. The and this is an entirely different subject, but that was something that was discussed quite a bit. And you would have kids that would come to school with IRA T-shirts, and there were murals and fundraisers, and a lot of that uh, was a part of the fabric and culture of of li- life in Boston, particularly in Irish Catholic communities. Um, so we were aware of Boston, of Ireland, as a kind of parent nation sort of um and and but got a kind of i think skewed picture of what ha- was happening there um and and also sort of a lot of those very conservative religious cultural values and the evolution of those happened kind of in tandem in Ireland and in Boston so that it wouldn't have stood out as uh, it, like looking back because it's a historical movie where you look back now and go oh wow this is what was going on then it might have i suspect seemed less outrageous or less you know people were less aware of it at the time just a very long-winded way of saying we got a kind of funhouse mirror picture of ireland i think in boston um and and part of that was an awareness of these stories but in no way in the in the you know complete nuanced complex sense that the story is brought to life in the film and matt you said that um when you started out in the 90s it was movies like this that were being made and now hollywood movie changed so much is this more the kind of movies you and ben want to make with artist equity moving forward yes absolutely um and yeah in the 90s you know there there would have been a number of films of this scale and about and 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 about things with filmmakers with things to say and you know there there would have been a number of these every year and 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 you know they've been decreasing obviously over over the years and and there's been a lot written about that and a lot of people complain about that and the only the only way to remedy that is to make these films and to put them in the theaters and for the moviegoers to to go support them because they i think people might not be aware of how much power they have as 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 moviegoers and hollywood's a very reactive place and you know they respond to what the audience response to and the audience will drive the kind of uh things that get made and so um so if you want to see more films like this then then you've got to go to them and and uh you know don't sit and say I'm, I'll, I'll wait for it to come you know uh into my living room um because it, it makes it it makes them just harder and harder to make um you know even you know in this situation the only way to do it the only way we could finance it was really with the people who made it and we say like look you become an owner of the film with us and 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 you know and, and it's everybody's just betting on it and making the movie because they want to see it get made um and it's made with with that kind of love and passion and and um you know if if if, if people go to see it then then we can make more of them and these are exactly the type of movies we'd like to be making 
And Killian, finally, Peaky Blinders. Barry Keoghan's joined you. Yeah. How's filming going? Going really, really well. Yeah, I think we're we're about halfway through uh, now. So yeah, we got Barry, we got Tim Tim Roth, we got Rebecca Ferguson, we got an amazing cast, amazing director Tom Harper. So and I really feel like this is one for the fans. You know, this is really what I'm trying to achieve with this one. And Ben and Matt, what can you tell me about Rip? We're shooting. Well, right we're in the middle of it. Yeah. That's why we're bearded. <laughs> oh yes. Everything you need to know, you can see right here. <laughs> I was wondering why both you handsome gentlemen were sporting beards this morning. You were too polite uh, to ask. <laughs> <laughs> when are we going to get to see it? Next year, uh, and, and maybe even end of year. That that's uh, yet to be yet to be determined. We've uh, the our equity. I think we've made eight movies now uh, in a couple of years, and this is our first partnership with with netflix so um we're just we're just figuring that out and they have a different way of planning and you know their sort of slate of movies and so we're, we're figuring it out but they uh, we all are very excited about it we've got a great cast we're really really looking forward to uh the movie coming out and um and go see the best present you can early christmas present you can give yourself this year's go see small things like these Absolutely. in a theater and bring every single person that you know <laughs> Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. Congratulations on this. Thank you. Gillian, ben and Matt, thank you so much for talking thank to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Nice Appreciate it. Nice to see you too.